Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again. Real Kids TV in the house like kitchen sinks. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the Chizano if you're not already subscribed. And hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action, this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive it. Now with no further ado, let's get into uh, this evening's video. If you will. It's 11.25, actually 11.26, uh, Wednesday evening. Got off of work um, about an hour and a half early. Um, so, hey, I figured I'd make a couple videos. You see what I'm saying? You know, I used to be uh, an individual that could not stand police. Could not stand correction officers. And I'm still a work in progress. You see what I'm saying? Now I understand that, you know, police are necessary. Um, not a huge fan of them. In lieu of everything that I'm sure that you all see on the news. What's understood doesn't need to be explained. So I'm quite sure that, you know, two plus two equals four. So I'm not a big uh, fan of the police, but I understand I just mentioned that they are necessary and definitely correction officers. And there are some cool correction officers. I know some correction officers, but I just don't like what they represent. And I just feel like you all see how these other ones act and you continue to work here and you continue to be a part of it instead of trying to, you know, at least be a solution. I ain't saying quit your job, but at least. So I, I'm just not a big, you know, fan of correction officers or police. But nevertheless, this is one situation, man. Officer blessed me. Police officer looked out for me. Swell. 2004. I decided I'm going to go out one night. I go to the club. I had only been home. I believe I got out in April. This was in August 2004. I'm at the club. I'm, I'm finger popping. I'm, you know, I'm doing my thing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. Young man, you know, having been out very, actually, I think it might have been my first time actually going out. My first, perhaps it was my second time going out as far as to the club. So I'm in the club. I call myself being careful. I'm knowing, I'm knowing that I'm driving. So I say, you know what? I better not really drink. I end up having one drink, literally one drink. I left the club at about, I want to say maybe 1230, 1245, somewhere right around in that, you know, neighborhood. And my one and only drink I probably had, I want to keep it real, maybe 1030, 1030, maybe 11. One drink. It was like a LIT it was like a mixed drink. No big deal. So I thought. So, you know, I hope my girl don't get mad at me for this, but you know, this is a long time ago, boo. You see what I'm saying? So I didn't even know you then. I got to tell the people the truth, right? I I, I can't be, I, I have to be honest and forthcoming. That's what my channel is, is built on. That's why it's called Real Ken, so I have to be real. <laughs> so, um, I think I had met somebody and they was, you know, telling me to come over and whatnot. And um, I think she probably needs some help with her homework, you know, something like that. So I was on my way. And as I'm driving down the road, I stop at a stoplight. If I go left, I need to go left at the stoplight. Once I make that left, I'll be on my way. So I'm at the stoplight. I'm at the stop sign, rather. No, I'm at the stop light. It's been a long time, so I, you know, I'm, I'm having to uh, recall some things, recollect, if you will. So I'm at the stop light, and the light turns green, and I proceed to turn left. And I'm driving, driving the speed limit. I have my seatbelt on. Everything's cool. I'm not swerving. I, f I feel just fine. I'm on the phone with this individual. Next thing I know, whoop. Oh, man. That's 
Anybody that's been in trouble to hear that noise, whoop, it's a nightmare. And then you see those red and blue lights flashing. It's a nightmare. Me, I'm feeling confident in myself because I'm like, why is he pulling me over? I know I haven't done anything. I'm not drunk. I haven't had a drink since 1030. Like I said, at this point, it's 1230, 1245. I feel like I did everything responsible. I have my seatbelt on, so I'm not really sure why he's pulling me over. Officer comes to the car. Ask the same silly question they always ask. You know why I pulled you over? Uh, no, sir, officer. You don't have your headlights on. Oh, wow. I don't have my headlights on. The street that I was traveling down was like a, it was a strip. So it was like stores on both sides. So it was well lit. Didn't even realize I didn't have my headlights on. Sir, have you been drinking? No, sir, officer. So, at that point, I guess he didn't believe me. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask you to step out of the vehicle. Step out of the vehicle. He gives me the field sobriety test. I don't refuse it for the simple fact that, you know, a lot of times when when officers try to give you this field sobriety test, most people, they refuse it, which they automatically arrest you for that. My particular case, I, I thought I was good. I feel like, shoot, I, I had nothing but the LIT. He gives me the test. I blow in the breathalyzer. Now, in Kentucky, the legal limit is 0 .08. 0 .08. If you pass 0 .08, you're considered drunk, driving drunk. I blew in the breathalyzer. I blew a .081, literally a .081. Put your hands behind your back. Oh, I'm sick. I am sick. I'm I'm sick. I'm disgusted. I'm just any sort of emotion that you could possibly imagine, that's how I'm feeling. I'm ashamed because I looked at it and I feel like I took every precaution to not catch a DUI with the exception of just simply not drinking anything at all. I felt absolutely fine. Just fine forgot to turn my lights on so he didn't profile me he didn't pull me over for no reason he didn't i'm driving down the street like idiot with no lights on four months after being home i'm in the back of the police car at this point he secures my car make sure you know it's locked up and and you know he tells me he's not gonna have it towed if i can have somebody to come out there and get it so i'm like oh my god I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm on parole. In Kentucky, if you catch a DUI while on parole, you're going back. Especially then. I don't know about now. But back then, if you caught a, a DUI while on parole, you were going back to prison. No questions asked. It's an automatic uh, uh, revocation. You're being revoked. Now, you can catch other misdemeanors long as it's not an assault or a DUI. Not that that's good either. But I'm just simply saying those are the two things that will send you back. And, of course, a felony conviction. That goes without being said. So I'm in the back of the cop car, man. I'm talking to the officer. I'm like, look, officer, man. Please don't take me in for DUI, man. Please don't. I've been home, man. I've only been home for four months. I decided to come out tonight, have me a little fun. I did have one drink, but that was at 1030. I didn't, I feel perfectly fine. I didn't know. I didn't know that I was, you know, uh, legally drunk. But please don't take me in. Please don't. 
uh, I got to take you in, man. You know, I've already called it in and I'm like, please, officer, I go through my, you know, I'm, I'm, I went to Oscar right here. You see what I'm saying? I went to Oscar right here. Uh, award winning Oscar. Please, officer, don't take me in. Man, I got a daughter, man. My daughter's young. Man, I've been gone out of her life. She's young. I've been gone. I just did three years. I just did three years. I'm just getting home, man. This is automatically going to send me back to prison. What am I going to tell my mom, my, you know, my family, my kids? Everybody's going to be disappointed in me, man. It was an honest mistake. I didn't know. I did not know that I was drunk. I had one drink. I don't even think I finished the drink. I was trying my best to abide by the, the laws, the rules. So, we're on our way to, I'm, I'm steadily talking, but as I'm steadily talking, he's steadily driving. We get closer and closer to the jail. The dude was listening to me. He was a young dude. The officer was a young dude. I'm going to say at the time, he might have been Maybe 26, 27. Please, officer, please don't take me to jail for a DUI. I said, do you realize, man, how hard it is out here in life? I'm just coming home. I got a job. I'm, I'm established. I, I think I probably had my own place at the time. I'm, I'm just now, I'm going to lose all of this. For one foolish mistake that I, I, I take accountability for my actions, but it was totally... I was not trying to, you know, do this. Nothing that I was saying appeared to be working. Please, officer, man, don't do this to me, officer. Please, please don't do this to me, officer. <laughs> I got to keep it real. This is what I went through, you all. I did. I think I might even, you know, shed a couple tears. Oh, what am I going to tell my mom, officer? What am I going to tell my daughter? Her birthdays and. the... In a month, a couple months, and we're planning a party for it. And I'm not even going to be here to celebrate. Oh, please don't do this to me. Please don't. We pull into the police station. We pull into the jail, actually. The jail here, the county jail, is underground. I know it sounds weird, but so they got like a little garage. He, you know, he puts his, uh, whatever he, his scanner, his badge, whatever he scans. They open the garage. Ah, oh, man, I'm about to get booked on DUI. I'm hit. At this point, we're inside the garage. Once he, you know, scanned himself in. He said, listen, man. I got a little girl, too. And I, can ima I can't imagine how... Her life would be, actually, he said he had twin girls. I can't imagine how their life would be without me in the picture for a few years. He said a few weeks, heck, a few days. And he said, and I know that this DUI could potentially send you back. So this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Because, because you blew a point zero eight one, You was barely over the limit. I have to arrest you on something. But instead of a DUI, I'm going to charge you with reckless driving. HBD. Reckless driving? What, what, what is HBD? Has been drinking. I'm like, oh, officer, man, I, I really, really appreciate you, man. But is there any way we can leave the HBD off? Because technically, when you're on parole, you're not even really supposed to be drinking. Now, they're not really, you know, sticklers on it. But at the same time, it's still a violation of your parole. So I explained that to him. And uh, don't you know that when we got to the jail and we wrote up the paperwork, he wrote the paperwork up. He only charged me with reckless driving, failure to have headlights on. My bond was like $100, $104, and my car didn't get towed. Man, 
that was one of the happiest days of my life. I could not believe that this officer had given me a break. I've never really had a break. Anytime I get, I get arrested, man, I don't really get arrested for anything, you know, no misdemeanors and things like that. Typically when I go to jail, my bond is 20, 30,000. There is no bail bondsman here. There's no 10% automatic 10%. You have to go to the court and, and ask for 10%. And depending on who your lawyer is, if you have a lawyer, what your criminal record is, you're on probation or parole, you know, there's a whole lot of factors into getting your bond reduced to 10%. So typically when I go to jail, man, it's, you know, <laughs> 25, 30,000, 40,000, 104 bucks. Reckless driving, failure to cut on my headlights. I got out maybe an hour later. Like one of my partners picked me up, went and got my car. And um, called my PO. Now, I knew my PO wasn't present in the office at that time, obviously, because it's, you know, at this point, it's probably 2 o'clock in the morning. But anytime you get arrested, you have to let your PO know within, I think it's 72 hours. So I didn't even want to take no time. I called, left a message, let my PO know what had happened. End up going to court. I don't know. A couple weeks later, however long my court date was out, was set out. And um, they dismissed it. They dismissed it. They just said, you know, real kins. Cut your headlights on. Don't be riding around with no headlights. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hurry up and got out of that courtroom. So shout out to that officer. Don't remember his name. Probably wouldn't be wise for me to say his name, even if I knew his name. So there are some cool officers. Now, because he allowed me to get away with that, I'm not necessarily just saying that he was a cool officer. Because after all, technically, I was breaking the law. Technically, it's my responsibility to know, hey, I'm driving. Probably shouldn't drink anything at all. Or maybe I should just, you know, a designated driver or, you know, these days you got Uber, you got Lyft. But back then you didn't have all of that, which is no excuse. No excuse whatsoever. And being ignorant of the law is not a defense in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and probably nowhere. It's our responsibility to know what the law is. I don't care if you got to carry your portable breathalyzer on you. You get behind that wheel. It's our responsibility to know that we're under that 0.08 limit or whatever it is in your particular state. So I hold myself accountable for that. Um, I definitely hold myself accountable and, you know, I, I don't really go to clubs too much these days, but if I do, then I'm always thinking about that situation in that moment. I'm always double checking my headlights. I used to have a terrible a habit of not turning my headlights on. I don't know what was wrong with me. Just get in the car and go. No headlights. And then, you know, eventually, oh, I don't have my lights on. I turn my lights on and... But that was just a thing that, you know, I don't know what it was. Accountability. I had to take a, be accountable for my actions. And guess what? If that officer had to book me for a DUI, yeah, I would have been sent back. But it would have been my own fault. No, nope, not his fault. Not the people that made the drink at the club. No one else's fault but my own. See, in life, especially when you're on probation, parole, you have a criminal record, slip-ups count. Slip-ups could cost you a great portion of your life. Because had I have gotten violated, I would have went and sit in the county jail for about two to three months because that's how long it takes to see the PV board. That's what they're called, the PV board. So then when you see the PV board, they probably would have gave me another 12 months now, that two or three months that I sit in the county, it doesn't even count. It counts on the back end of my sentence as far as serving my sentence out. But that 12-month deferment that they probably would have given me, they're not going to say, okay, well, you already did three of it. No, it was 12 months from 
this particular day and then come back and see us and then we'll think about letting you out again. Could have cost me everything. One drink, one LIT could have cost me everything. Do the right thing in life, man. Be mindful. Always be mindful. Never get too comfortable. I don't care if you're on probation, parole, and you've been home five, six years, and you feel like my PO's cool, and they don't, you know, they don't really sweat me too much, or they, they kind of just let me do what I do. Understand, man. They give you just enough rope. Give you just enough rope. Never get too comfortable. Prison. 24 hours. It's always bed space. Revolving doors. All they do. Citivism. People just continuously come back. Never going to turn you away. Don't be me. How I was in 2004. Put your family back in this situation. Your loved ones, your kids, and make them go through this over and over again. Because at some point, man, they, they'll grow tired and eventually resent you and leave you. Because they'll feel like you want to continue to go back to prison. We're not going to keep going through this with you. Did it once, did it twice. We're not going to continue to do it. You can't blame them. Man. Real Kens TV. Hopefully you liked the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the Chizana if you haven't already subscribed. And hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action and this heat, you're amongst the first to receive it. Real Kens TV. We out.